In this video tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how to configure DreamReport to connect to a generic Microsoft SQL Server database, select a table that contains data to report on, and how to create and generate reports with data from the database table. This demonstration, of course, applies to data in any kind of database and not just SQL Server. So let's talk about DreamReport's data connectivity options. DreamReport has built an open connectivity to multiple plant data sources, including real-time data sources such as HMIs and PLCs, high-performance or high-volume process historians, and the focus of this demonstration, connectivity to any open database platform such as Microsoft Access, Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle, and many others. We utilize an ODBC or OLEDB connection to the database. We expose both SQL tables and views to report on. And we require no SQL knowledge or programming skills on the user's part to query the database and to develop the report. However, SQL scripting is supported should you wish to write your own SQL queries. We need to consider two different table formats which we might run across which in DreamReport are described as column item table structures and a generic or any DB structure. DreamReport is aware of these different table structures, which you identify when configuring the DreamReport ODBC driver instance. These table structures are abstracted from the user when creating reports. All table or view fields are presented as tags. Now let's look at these table structures in more detail. In this table, we see the fields or columns arranged in a column item structure. In addition to the date and time column, each column contains data for a specific tag or item. In this case, we have fields for our tank one mixer level and temperature states, tank two mixer level and temperatures values, etc. When we configure an instance of the ODBC driver in Dream Report, we specify that the table has a column item structure, we select the table, and then select the date and time field. Then, when configuring any object in Dream Report, when we browse for data items, the table fields are shown as tags. In this table, we see that the fields are arranged in a generic or any DB structure. We have three fields to consider here date and time, a tag item field, and the field that contains the data. When we configure an instance of the ODBC driver in Dream Report, we specify that the table has an NEDB structure, we select the table, select the field for item names, select the field for item values, and then we select the field for the date and time stamp. Then, when configuring any object in Dream Report, when we browse for data items, the values stored in the item name field, as shown in the table on the left, are shown as distinct tags in the data item browser. In this final slide, we'll follow a typical workflow in creating a Dream Report project using data in a SQL Server database. First, we'll open the Dream Report Design Studio and create a new project. Then, we'll open the ODBC or OLEDB driver and add and configure an instance pointing to a table in our database. We can add additional instances to other tables or even different databases as well. At this point, we're ready to create a new report. We can drop any kind of tabular, chart, or calculation object on the report and browse the fields in the table, which will be represented as tags for use on the object. After configuring the object, we're ready to start Dream Report's runtime engine and generate a report. Let's go ahead and launch Dream Report Studio and create a new project. We'll give our project a name and then start to configure our communication drivers. So we're going to use the open communication protocols and choose the ODBC historical values communication driver. The first instance we'll create will be against a storage tanks table in Microsoft SQL Server database. We'll choose an ODBC data source name pointing to that database, verify our credentials, 
and then it'll expose all the tables and views in that database and we're going to go down and find the table we're working with you'll see we have some views as well as tables and the table we're working with in this instance is the storage tanks table and specify that it's using a column item structure let's choose the field for the date and time and that's it, add it to our list. We'll add another one now, point into a database table. We'll give the instance of our driver a logical name. We'll go to that specific ODBC data source, connect up, and this is a table that contains consumed energy information. Since this is an NEDB table structure, we have to specify the table field for the item names, in this case, it's tag name, the field for the item values, and finally, the field for the date and time. And there we have that table shown, tag name, timestamp, and value, and add it to our list. At this point, we're ready to start creating a new report. We'll create a report and give it a name. The default report output is PDF, but we'll just make sure that the PDF document opens as soon as the report is generated. So now let's put a graphical object onto the report. We'll start off with a line chart and select a tag. To add pens to our chart, we'll get data from an external history server, then select the data item from our data source, which was our tank data, and choose the tank one level field. We'll set our time period to be the past one hour. Set our pen color. And set a legend. Then we add that line to the list. We'll do the same for tank 2 level. And again, while these are being exposed as tags, they are in fact the fields in that storage tanks table. Choose our pen color and enter a legend. Add this line. And then finally, tank number three level tag. Add the pen. And we're done with the three tags we'll include on this chart. Let's set appearance options now. We'll enter in a chart name. Set some display options like legend, y-axis, scaling, grids to display, and where to display our legend. And that's it. We've now created a line chart to include on this report. Next, let's add an item table to the report. An item table will allow us to display data over a defined time period. So first we go in and select our tag data tags again. We'll go to our data source, choose our level and our temperature now just for tank one in this instance. And we'll show again the data for the last one hour. We'll give our table a name. Change some captions, fonts and alignments. And in this case, we're going to apply an additional SQL condition to the data. In this example, we just want to report the tank one temperature and levels only when the mixer was actually running or the mixer was mixing. We simply browse for the tank one mixer tag. We click the add button to add it to our condition. And then we enter in the condition where that mixer status equals 1. So looking at the real table here, we have the raw data, and we only want to report it when that mixer status equals 1. So very easy to create any kind of conditions on the data to filter out what you need. Let's now add a second page to our report. And in this page, we're going to show some data from our energy table. The first thing we're going to do is show a single data item. And in this data item, we're going to browse for our energy table. 
and we want to look at the average temperature. So we look at one of our predefined statistical functions, choose our time period being the last two weeks in this case, go to our result representation, but in this case, instead of showing the data as a numeric value, we're going to show it as a widget. Let's configure the widget as a gauge. We'll enter in our scaling information, major and minor divisions, titles, engineering units, all the kind of graphical formatting that you'd want to make on an object such as this. Give our widget a title as the average temperature, set our indicator width, and then what we're going to do is put different grade scales. So for instance, zero to five or seven degrees, let's give it one color on the scale. The next break point, maybe eight to 15 degrees, we'll give another color, etc. And we'll do that from zero to 35, since this is in degrees Celsius. Okay, we've set all of those. And now we can complete the configuration of that widget, add it to the screen, resize it, and now we have a nice little gauge to display on our report. Let's make a copy of this, and we'll also use it to display our average energy consumed over the last two weeks. So we'll give our object a name, choose the different tag, in this case it's the energy consumed tag from that table, leave the time period being the last two weeks, and we'll just make some configuration changes on this one. Instead of doing it in temperature from 0 to 35 degrees, we're going from 0 to 350 kilowatts. Set our titles and fonts. And then finally, we need to change our color grade breakpoints to match the new min and max range that we're working with. And there we have a nice little display of two gauges showing us average values for the last two weeks. And just format that on the screen, put a little border around it in the background. And we're done with those objects. The last object will be another item table. And we'll just simply look at the last couple of weeks, the raw data that was recorded for the external temperature and for the energy consumed. Again, we browse to our energy data data source, pick our tags, leave our time period as the last two weeks, set our captions, and just as we had done with the item table earlier, we should be ready to display this data in a nice tabular format. Let's change the appearance to include a bold header just to make it stand out. Okay, at this point, the general content of the report is done. Let's just do some minor formatting. Change the appearance a little bit, so we'll drop on the screen here a report name, dynamic object. We'll do the same, but this time we'll add a date and time object. And in this case, we'll show the report generation time, which is a built-in function. Now let's turn that into our page header simply by grabbing on the little cursor up there and sliding it down to where we want our header to be located. Now let's slide down to the bottom of the page and put a page number on there. Again a standard object. And turn that into our page footer. Okay, the last thing we'll do is insert a report background. Oh, let's use a picture for this. Choose an image of our plant. There we have a picture of our tank system. So let's go ahead and save this report and then run the project. We'll generate the storage tanks report. And there we have our report showing our trend for the last hour of our tank levels. We'll have our mixer one or tank one mixer running data information. And there you'll see on the timestamps only recording the data 
where the mixer value is a 1. Let's go down to our second page, which shows our widgets for our average temperature and average energy consumed for the last two weeks, and then the actual values recorded in a database table.